Welcome everyone to the In Time Sanctuary Priest and Truth Ministries. This afternoon, the focus of our study is last day's warnings against powerful satanic deception. It's part one of a series of three because the materials that we need to cover is so enormous and ab above all of all the warnings of Jesus in Matthew 24 this is the most serious of all because Jesus repeated it several times in fact Jesus words echoes rings until the end of time loud and clear what's out that no one will deceive you deception is the first and the most effective methods of Satan in destroying the angels in heaven and Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And it is the most powerful methods of deception that he prepared for the end time throughout the whole world. So our title is Perfect Deceiver and it's Perfect Deception. We discussed that the other time. Seven references in the book of Revelation, but we need to look at the, the, the thing that help us to understand because it's mentioned seven times and let us read the deceiver of heaven and earth we know that billions of angels but the book of revelation one fourth one third of angels but if you look at the population of the world each one has been tempted meaning to say billions of angels together with satan really was on planet earth Revelation 12, verse 9, deceive the whole world. There is no part of the world that is not under deception. Second, the lamp-like beast is an, another agent of deception. Okay, he deceives the whole earth, Revelation 13, 4. But his, another ally, ally is that Babylon, Satan, agents for deception under the three unclean spirit, according to Revelation 16. Verses 13 and 14, and he saved, he saved all nations. But what is the good news is that the world's deceiver will be cast into the lake of fire when God's work on earth is done. However, we need to understand that after 1,000 years, vacation in heaven, there is still, that's why I say deception after being deceived, because the millions of population of the world had been deceived. And then when Jesus came, after 1,000 years, he wants to take over the city of God. And again, he deceived. So meaning to say, that is his perfect deception, not only on planet Earth from Adam and Eve, and the closing of the earth history, but also the final eradication of the devil and those who had been deceived. And so... We need to look at the counterfeit. Deception by imitation and counterfeit. To make this uh, deception very powerful, it should be imitated and counterfeited. Powerful deception are presented clearly in the Bible. Satan, the world's expert of inconceivable deception, imitate and counterfeit the work of God on earth. To imitate means to follow a model or pattern. To make a copy, counterpart, resemblance of, of while the counterfeit is falsely produced what appears to be official and valid to produce false copy of the genuine. And so, the question here is that deception is used by the devil in Genesis 3.13. And in Genesis 4, verse 8, he used also coercion. These two things. He used from the beginning of time in Genesis 3 and Genesis 4, and he used it in the end of time from Revelation 12 until in the end of time. And so we need to understand the question, why Satan used decisively deception over persecution to destroy God's people in the end time? The great controversy has about 10 pages of answer, but I just want to quote some. In the time of Nero, 
persecution was so strong because Nero says, if Christian will dominate the world because the world was turned upside down because of the Christians, then the temples of the pagan temples will be destroyed, their money will be losing, and the empire will be destroyed. However, so much persecution, listen to what Ellen White says. In vain, Satan is forced to destroy the church, Christ, by violence. The great controversy in which the disciples of Jesus yielded up their lives did not cease when this faithful standard bearer fell at their post. By defeat, they conquered. God's workmen were slain, but the work went steadily forward. The gospel continued to spread and the number of adherents increased. Did you get the point here? That Satan did not destroy the church of Christ by violence because they were defeated in their life, but actually by defeat they conquered. They were slain, but the work continued forward and the gospel spread and a lot of adherents. Thousands were imprisoned and slain. Others sprang up to fill up their places, their places. leaving others Leaving other example, dying testimony were a constant witness for the truth. Were at least expected. The subject, that's the people of Satan, were living in his service and enlisting the banner of Christ. Here is the irony or the paradox. While Nero and all other people were persecuting the Christians, they make them feed into the lion. The, the, the look at this as a, as, a, as, as, a, as a game by which they play human lives, but as they constantly witness for the truth. According to Ellen White, those onlookers, the watcher of this worst persecution, because they were fed by the lions and versus animals, Satan's people also were living in his service and enlisting in the banner of Jesus Christ. And so Ellen White continues, Satan therefore laid his plan to war no more successfully against the government of God by planting his banner in the Christian church. Why? Satan also was terrified that number of his people were all returning to Jesus Christ and his kingdom because of the persecution. So he stopped the persecution and he started infiltration into the church. She said, persecution ceased and instead substituted the most dangerous allurement of temporal prosperity, worldly honor. It required a desperate struggle of the faithful to stand firm, decision and abomination were distinguished in sacerdotal garments and introduced into the church. So that's why a few centuries later, when millions had been martyred and millions of subjects of Satan turned their hearts to the kingdom of Jesus Christ, persecution stopped and Satan changed his method. He changed it to deception. And once he changed it to deception, as we have mentioned seven times in the book of Revelation, it mentioned that the deception is really, really great. Now let's, let's, let's turn. We need to understand that deception is a very dangerous. It is more powerful. But let's look at first some, some of the biblical foundations of deception. And then let's go to Ellen White. Paul says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power, against rulers of darkness of this age, against a spiritual host of wickedness in heavenly places. Ephesians 6.12 And again in other uh, writing in 1 Timothy 4.1, now the Spirit explicitly says that in the latter times, some will depart from faith, giving heed to the deceiving spirit, and the doctrines of the demons. And again, Paul says, such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself transformed himself into an angel of life. Therefore, 
it is no great thing that his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness whose end will be in according to their works. 2 Corinthians 11 verses 13 to 15. And Paul warns, lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. 2 Corinthians 2, 11. Or as in INIB put it, for we are not unaware of his schemes. But all is this, this all is really a dangerous. Let's look at now the, the, the counterfeit. Look at now in this. The God the Father is imitated and counterfeited by the dragon. Let's look at the, in, in, in the Bible. God the Father dwells in heaven. The dragon once dwelled in heaven. God has a throne. The dragon has a throne. God is worship. The dragon is worship. God gives power to the throne and authority of Christ. The dragon gives power, his throne, authority to the sea beast. God pour out his wrath against rebellious humanity. The dragon pour out his wrath against God's people. God lives and reigns. The, the, the dragon is destroyed. Only the ending. But it's really imitated and counterfeited the work of God. So the choice between God and Satan, note that at, in the end of time, Satan will seek to take God's place in the world. He wants to be in charge of the world, to be worshipped, just as he did at the beginning of his rebellion, according to Isaiah 14, verses 12 to 15. During the time, God urged, urged inhabitants to worship him, who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and the fountains of water, Revelation 14, 7. Only those who know the genuine from imitation and counterfeit are safe and secured from this deception. Let's look at again another Christ work and activities in saving humanity is imitated and counterfeited by the CBs. This is the agent of Satan. Jesus began his ministry coming from water. The CBs comes from water to begin his activity. Jesus looks like the father, but the CBs look like a dragon having seven heads and ten horns. Jesus received the authority and throne from the Father. The sea beast also received full authority and throne from the dragon. Jesus was slain and resurrected. The sea beast is slain and resurrected. Jesus received worship and universal authority after his resurrection. The sea beast received worship and universal authority after healing the deadly one. The target of Jesus' salvific activity is every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. The target of the sea beast deception, deceptive activity is every tribe, people, tongue, and nation. Note that the above comparison, that at the end of time there will be a massive counterfeit of Jesus Christ's works and his salvific activities. The imitation and the counterfeit will be so great and devastating that most people on the world will be deceived according to Revelation 13, 11 to 17. Let's go to the third, meaning to say, the divine trinity has been imitated and counterfeited by the demonic trinity. Let's go now to the Holy Spirit, imitated and counterfeit by the earth base or the lamp like beast. The Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of Truth, guiding people to salvation. The earth base is called false prophet, deserving the people. The Holy Spirit directs people to worship Christ. The lamp like beast promotes the sea beast and directs people to worship it. The Holy Spirit exercises authority of Christ. The lamp-like beast exercises the authority of the sea beast. The Holy Spirit performs miraculous signs. The lamp-like beast performs miraculous signs. The Holy Spirit come in fire from heaven at Pentecost. The sea beast also will bring fires from heaven. The Holy Spirit gives life and breath of life, and the earth beast gives life and breath to life to the image of the beast. The Holy Spirit applies the seal of God on the foreheads. 
the lamp-like beast apply also the mark of the beast in the hands or in the foreheads. Here you see that the divine trinity counterfeited, imitated also by the demonic trinity. Note that the portrayals of Satan in Sikhan Ali allows shows that the earth beast, that is the lamp-like beast, or USA, will be the key, key, uh, the key player in the last final crisis. By imitating the counterfeit of the Holy Spirit's work throughout the whole world, the deception also is done throughout the world with signs, great wonders, miracles to the whole world will be deceived. The work of God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit had been imitated, counterfeited by the dragon, the sea beast, the earth beast, or the lamp-like beast, meaning total deception against the Godhead of the universe. And so, we need to look at also the agents of God. As we, we look at here, the genuine is counterfeited. The three angels' messages has been counterfeited by the three unclean spirit. The three angels went throughout the whole world to present the gospel. However, the three unclean spirit also went throughout the whole world and deceived people. Even the city, the city of God and the city of God's people is Jerusalem. Counterfeited again by a great city of the devil is spiritually called Babylon. Christ's church, the pure woman, is counterfeited also by a harlot woman, the seal of God, and the mark of the beast. Here is the, here is the deception that is so powerful. Here what we see is the God, the Trinity, has been done. Their works of activities in saving humanity, and yet, the three demonic trinity imitated, counterfeited the work. So how do you do? I have here in my wallet, I have a 1,000 bill here, but I don't have. How do you know that this 1,000 bill is really genuine? How do you know a counterfeit between a genuine? The best thing is know the genuine, know the truth so that the counterfeit and the imitation is clearly seen. That's really, that's why we will discuss that the deception is imitated and counterfeited because it looks like the original and the genuine. So this is really important in the way how we understand deception and imitation. Now, let us discuss the extent of deception in the Christian life and experience. Ah, here is a very important for us to understand. Okay, because Ellen White has a warning. The warning, she said, Satan can present counterfeit so closely resembling the truth that it deceives those who are willing to be deceived, who desire to shun self-denial and sacrifice demanded by truth. But it is impossible for him to hold under his power one soul who is honestly desire at whatever cost to know the truth. Christ is the truth and the light which light every man that comes into the world. The day before dawn, page 12. She continue, in the future, truth will be counterfeited by precepts of men. Deceptive theories will be presented safe doctrines. Evangelism, page 600, 605. So here is the warning of, G of Ellen White, that the counterfeit, counterfeit is really looks like exact copy of the genuine. In fact, he says again in the days before dawn, page 36, the last great delusion is soon to open before us. Antichrist will perform his marvelous works in our sight. 
closely counterfeit resemble the true that is impossible to distinguish between them except by the word of God. That's our challenge, my brothers and sisters. So closely will the counterfeit resemble that it is really difficult to distinguish just like a counterfeit money. Multitudes will be deluded through rejection of truth and they accepted the counterfeit faithfully by this is a sad. We need to understand. First, let's go to counterfeit messages. There will be counterfeit messages coming from persons in all directions. One after another will rise up, appearing to be inspired when they have not inspiration from heaven. But under the deception of the enemy, all who receive their messages will be laid astray. Then let us walk carefully not to open wide the door of the enemy to enter through impressions, dreams, visions. God will help us look in faith to Jesus and be guided by his word he has spoken. Selected Messages, Volume 3, page 404. Meaning to say, messages. This, this echo in Genesis 3. There was a message of Satan. You will not die. You will not die. You will live long. And again, on the end, the end time, Ellen White is giving us a warning that there are false messages. Now, as I said, this is in Christian life. Counterfeit conversions. Oh, Satan would at some point get counterfeit conversions. Review on Herald Debris 4, 14, 1853. Counterfeit conversion? Oh, I know of a story. Real story of a young man who fell in love with a young Seventh-day Adventist lady. And he was not an Adventist and joined. And he said to himself, I will be an Adventist for 15 years only. And so, he got married, become an elder, become a leader. After 15 years, he announced in the hour of worship, I'm leaving the Adventist church because I just got my wife. That's all what I have did. But, but he said, Elder, you are an elder, you are an officer, you will really make this church great. But that's all, that's the end. Counterfeit conversion. Counterfeit faith. True faith, in no sense, seems allied to presumption. The only he who has true faith is secure against presumption, for presumption is Satan's counterfeit of faith. Here again. Conversion is counterfeited, and again now, our Christian faith is counterfeited. That's why we need to look at to ourselves. We need to listen. Whether we need to evaluate whether our faith is genuine or not. Third, counterfeit sanctification or holiness. Are you are urged by the Holy Spirit of the Lord to present His law as the great standard of righteousness and to warn our people. Against modern counterfeit sanctification, which has its origin in will worship rather than submission to the will of God. This error is fast flooding the world. As God's witnesses, we shall be called to bear a decided testimony against it. It is one of the various delusions in the last days that will probe temptation to all who believe the present, present truth. Faith and works, page 51. So we have counterfeit messages, counterfeit faith, counterfeit sanctification. Now he said, she said, counterfeit righteousness. Satan will turn people from the law of God, notwithstanding this. So will counterfeit righteousness, if possible, he would deceive the very elect. Fundamental of Christian education, 471. Counterfeit righteousness. Righteousness by keeping the law or salvation by human works. Anything we can do to contribute to our salvation is a counterfeit righteousness. And we have seen that in the brother, two brothers in the Garden of Eden. One, Abel believed on righteousness by faith. 
Cain live a counterfeit righteousness by law, by works. Fourth, counterfeit miracles. These are dangerous because Satan is a very diligent student of the Bible, Ellen White says. But many Christians are not diligent enough. He knows that his time is short. He seek at every point counterwork the work of the Lord upon earth. And Satan, surrounded by evil angels claiming to be God, will work miracles of all kinds to deceive, if possible, the very elect. God's people will not find their safety in the workings of miracle, for Satan will counterfeit miracles that root that will be wrought, according to Ellen White, in Council for the Church, or Testimonies for the Church, chap, uh, this, uh, volume 9, page 16. She said, miracles will be wrought, sick will be healed, signs and wonders will follow believers. Satan also works with lying wonders, even bringing down fire in heaven in the sight of men. Great Controversy 612. What can we do? What can we can do, my brothers and sisters? When everything is counterfeited, even counterfeit revivals. Ellen White says, before the final visitation of the judgment, God's judgment on earth, there will be a primitive revival godliness that has never been witnessed. So we are waiting for that. But listen to what she said. In the Greek controversy 644, 464, the enemy of souls desires to hinder this work. And before such movement shall come, he will endeavor to prevent it by introducing a counterfeit revival. This is a sad thing, my brothers and sisters. That's why we have some years, our topic is revival and reformation. But why it dies before we are revived? Before there was reform, reason, the book of Psalms 119 several times says that true biblical revival are revived by the word of God. Psalms 19, 119 verses 25, 107, 154. We are revived in God's way, not our own way. Verse 37. We are revived in his loving kindness. Verses 88. And we are revived in his judgment. When we understand his judgment, we are revived. Verse 156. So revival and reformation must take place under the ministration of the holy angels. We need this one because God's work of revival will be counterfeited by a false revival. That's why when we have a revival in our church, I always think probably this revival and reformation takes short time. We need to understand that revival and reformation are two different things. Revival signifies renewal of spiritual life, a quickening of powers of mind and heart, a resurrection from spiritual death. Whereas reformation signifies reorganization, Chains of ideas, theories, habits, and practices. Reformation will not bring forth good fruit of righteousness unless it is connected with the revival of the Spirit. And reformation are to do their appointed work in doing the work that they must blend. Christian Service, page 42. Another, those who reject the truth think they belong to God. She said in early writings, I saw that God has honest children among nominal Adventists. We need to be careful. I saw that God has honest children among the nominal Adventists. And in the fallen churches, before the plagues were before out, ministers and people will be called out from these churches and will gladly receive the truth. Satan knows this, and before the loud cry of the third angel's message, 
is given, he raises an excitement and religious bodies that those who have rejected the truth may think that God is with them. No one would say that I belong to Satan, on the side of Satan. But here he is. Let's come now to the most dangerous. Evil angel in forms of believers will work in our ranks to bring in a strong spirit of unbelief. These powers of evil will assemble in our meetings, not to receive a blessing, but to counterwork the influence of the Spirit of God. Mind, Character, and Personality, Volume 3, page 504. And so, in our meetings, in our meeting, in our worship, evil angels in a form of believers, how do we know that they are evil angels? We can only understand through their words, whether their words is in harmony with the word of God. Evil angels in a form of men will talk to those who know the truth. They will misinterpret and misconstrue the statement of the messengers of God. Selected Messages, Volume 3, page 411. This is what Paul says in Ephesians 6. So how can we know? Angel, in a form of believers, go with the believers in their meetings. This is master deception. Perfect deception. And so, not only that. Satan is a cunning force, he said. It is not difficult for evil angels to represent both the saints and the sinners who have died. Now he is using dead saints and sinners, and then he will represent both to make representation visible to human eyes. This manifestation will be more frequent and developments of a more startling character will appear as we near close of time. Evangelism, page 604. So meaning to say, there is no place. That's why we said it's a perfect deception. Here is again, another. Ellen White says, multitude will be deluded throughout the rejection of the truth. And they will accept the counterfeit humanity as healed because as we near in the close of time, there will be a greater and greater external parade of hidden powers. Hidden deities will manifest and signal the power and will exhibit themselves before the cities of the world. Here comes against the deception. The deities. The people worship will parade in the cities of the world and people will accept that this is really their God. Impersonating Christ. So, here, we need to understand Satan will take the field and personate Christ. He will misinterpret Misapply, prevent anything possibly can to deceive, if possible, the very elect. Testimonies to Minister, page 411. He is preparing the entire world for a miracle that people will assume that they are Jesus Christ. In many parts of the world, Ellen White says, with dazzling brightness and glory, he will present into the world and the people will shout, Here is Christ. But actually, it's a delusion. Let's come to an end. A question of our security. What is our security from this powerful deception? If the Holy Trinity is imitated and counterfeited, the work of He heavenly angels, the three angels, and God's angels, misrepresented, misapplied, resemble like the truth. What is our security? 
Our security is found in Jan 8:12. Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in the darkness, but have life, have light in their life. Our security is there is only one. When we follow Christ, we will never walk in darkness. Ellen White says, and this is very, very significant statement. Only those who had been diligent students of the scriptures who have received the truth will be shielded from the powerful delusion that takes place the world captive. By the Bible testimonies, this will detect the deceiver in his disguise. Great Controversy 625. So let us be a student from the Bible. And then why previously I quoted that Satan studies so much of the Bible. He is a diligent Bible student. So diligent Bible student. But we receive the truth. We'll be shielded in the powerful delusion. God will help us to look in faith to Jesus and be guided by his word he has spoken. Ellen White says. You know what is our mistake? Our greatest mistake is that we are really, the entire world, even the Christian, even ministers, is that we have not studied thoroughly the deception of the enemy which Jesus warns us in the book of Matthew chapter 24. Be not deceived. We are not studying his scheme, his methods. He has all the methods. Let's look what Ellen White says in Testimonies for the Church, Volume 3, 281. If God abhors one sin above the other, of which people are guilty, it is doing nothing in the case of emergency. We are in the emergency because every now and then we don't know what happened to our world, but we do nothing to study what the enemy has done for us so that we will not be held captive. Indifference and neutrality in religious crisis is regarded of God as a grievous crime and equal to the very worst type of hostility against God. Because God has provided enough light. We need to study from Genesis 3, the deception, the coercion, which the devil used back and forth throughout the history of this world. It's a hostile against God when he already provided enough messages. What happened to us in the hands of our enemies, unprotected by holy angels. And so Jesus said to those Jews who believe him, if you abide in my word, you will be my disciple indeed. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. John 8. 31 and 32. My brothers and sisters, this powerful delusion is so great. It's so powerful that Jesus keep on repeating, be not deceived. But sad to say, Jesus repeated, many will be deceived. And in fact, the book of Revelation mentioned, the entire world is under the coverage of deception of the enemy. And so, when it come to an end, if the holy, if the divine trinity has been imitated and counterfeited, if the works of the angels, of the holy angels are counterfeited, if the miracles, signs and wonders, the healings, and all of these things before us, are we prepared? How prepared are we? As we come to a close of time, we do not know really, but we need to study what the enemy is doing. In the next part series, we are going to discuss how he deceived us in time of our worship. In our workplace, even how we do the work of God. 
Because this, there is only one thing that I appreciate from Ellen White. Every activity of God's people, there he give us a pointer where Satan is working. And we need to revive that spirit of studying our enemy because our enemy never sleep on studying us how to get us to be in his side in the end. We have a perfect deceiver. He has a perfect deception. We are so imperfect that only God's power and grace and mercy would able to save us from his powerful delusion that brings the entire world captive under his powerful deception that he had laid before God's people. My brothers and sisters, let us wake up. Let us be a diligent student of the scripture to know what is truth. Because truth is imitated to resemble like a genuine. And the only and the only safety is let us know what is genuine, the truth. There is no other way. May God bless us all. Thank you.